everyone and welcome to the third episode of the first season of the FIP CEO interviews. Today I am delighted to welcome Dr. Carmen Pena, immediate past president of FIP, to the interview chair. Many of you will know that Carmen is the first female president of FIP. Thank you so much Carmen for making time for us and your busy agenda, especially during these strange COVID-19 times we're living in. I wanted to welcome you to our first season of the FIP CEO interviews. We are running 10 interviews in this season with global leaders and colleagues in pharmacy and healthcare, where we seek to explore your journey, your experiences, and the impact of those experiences on your professional pr practice. I was inspired to start these discussions after the FIP president, Dominique Jordan, and myself were having a discussion with Professor Trevor Jones around the development of a vaccine and treatments for COVID-19. Trevor walked us through his experiences with AZT in the 90s and the, and the 80s and how, those inv how invaluable those lessons have been for now. Not only was he so open about what had gone well, he also spoke about what hadn't gone to plans. He was enthusiastic to share these experiences and learnings. And it made me reflect on how important it is for our pharmacy leaders to be able to share such insights, be able to share experiences when things go well and when they don't quite go to plan, and what we can learn from such experiences. So Carmen, I'm so proud to interview you today, this first season of interviews, first FIT president, as I mentioned, and my first female interviewee. And I can't wait to hear some of your insights with our profession and maybe some life lessons for me too. Welcome, Carmen. Thank you. Thank you, Catherine. It's a pleasure, a pleasure to hear you. And that uh, the first thing is to thank you. Thank you for inviting me to these interviews that I am sure that they will be very, very interesting. And uh, it, let me say only my first words, only to, to, uh, to send my condolences uh, for those who pass away uh, because of the, of the COVID-19. Millions of people, thousands uh, of, um, of uh, deceased and um, also uh, thousands of health professionals, including pharmacists, that they were affected and part of them, they pass away for this horrible virus. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you, Carmen. You're quite right. Um, these are sober times we live in and um, it's, it's very important that we remember those who have passed during this time. Thank you. Carmen, we aim to take about 30 minutes of your time. There's no time limit. Um, but before we get to the professional elements of the interview, let's start at the very beginning for you. We'll come to your biography and your professional journey. But Carmen, can you tell us a little bit about your childhood, where you came from, where you went to school, and what are your inspirations for choosing pharmacy? Well, it's every day that I am older, I, I think more in, in my childhood and in my adolescence because it was a well a, a, a good a, a happy childhood and maybe a bit boring because I am a restless a person and I was a restless a girl who needed to discover things and to discover the world and I have to to I have to say that I, I sure did it um, I had a wonderful parents a sister older sister that she's also pharmacist. Uh, who taught, supported, trust me, and um, maybe all uh, the impact of my life, the most, um, the most important person in my life regarding uh, the rest uh, of, uh, of all the things that I did uh, was my mother. But she passed away, but uh, she was my inspiration in everything. She was an educated feminist woman, although she never made it explicit because we have to think that she was a, a woman who was born in the 20s of last century in Spain, in Europe, and the, the culture was completely different. But uh, she studied in the university, that in that moment, uh, uh, only a few women uh, were to the university. 
and she gave us, she gave us to my sister and I a, a very stimulate education to be a, a free woman, free women, hardworking, and he was, she always said, you have to search of truth and justice in your life. And this is my, my childhood. Later, I went to the, I went to the university uh, in, in Madrid, in Spain, in the public, in one of the most, um, I think the, 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 the one of the best um, uh, uni uh, faculties of pharmacy in Spain, the Complutense University of Madrid in Spain. Uh, I studied pharmacy. Later, I received my, my doctor degree also in, in the same university. And I start my professional life until now. Amazing. Come back to some of these influences on you, Carmen, because I think they run like through you like a golden thread. This idea that you have um, a strong woman in your mother and your sister who gave you the wings to fly will come back to. And it's lovely to hear that you were a double, a double degree from uh, your university in Spain. Um, Carmen, I was looking at your biography. It would take me the entire interview and maybe longer to detail your career's achievements to date. But I note your doctorate in pharmacy, as you say, from the Complutense University of Madrid in Spain, and your background in community pharmacy. We'll come on to that in a minute. But in addition, General Secretary of the Spanish Consejo General of Pharmacists, President of the Spanish Consejo, Vice President of FIP, and the first female President of FIP. So, Carmen, I mentioned at the beginning of the interview the lessons we learn along the way don't just come from our successes. What would you say are the three biggest lessons, lessons of your career that you have had to date? Well, I think that the, one of the most important lessons I've learned is that it's essential uh, to have strong and loyal teams and that everything is possible. Everything is possible if you have, or if we have determination, perseverance, and of course, honesty. I think that uh, everything is possible to achieve. Uh, there are no, mm, uh, we have to think as women, but also as men, that uh, there are no walls if you want to do it. Uh, if you have, a, 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 as I told you, a, a, a good team um, supporting you, helping you, um, respecting, but also giving all the honest opinion cross over all, all the challenges that uh, you find in, at, at personal and of, of course at professional level. I think that this is the most important things. Very, they are apparently simple, but they are very strong uh, to achieve everything that you need in your life. That is not so much. They are not so big. Uh, the, the important things, there are a few, but it's very important to um, uh, try to achieve them. Yes, and, and what I hear from you, Carmen, there is that a lot of these lessons come from the values you want from a team in your personal and professional life. And for a woman such as yourself, you've had to uh, mix personal and professional because, you know, being a president takes up a lot of your personal time as well. So you need the, these um, traits in both sides of your life. You need people you can rely on. Absolutely. So Carmen, when we go on to the next question, we think about the awards that you have received, the things that you can be very proud of. And again, um, I'm looking at these and they are hugely notable. The Grand Cross of the Civil Order of Health of Spain, the Academy of Pharmaceutical Scientists of Japan, Woman Scientist in 2015. Again, look at that notable achievement for, for women there the Medal of Pharmaceutical Merit of the Brazilian Federal Council of Pharmacists, the Academic of the Royal Academy of Pharmacy of Spain. Uh, you've got several here. You've got the Ibero-American Academy of Pharmacy and Honorary Academic of the Medical Surgi Surgical Academy of Spain, and m multiple other recognitions and honors of Spain and countries of the world. Now, Carmen, we know that when we list our CVs, it's the tip of the iceberg. For you, Carmen, what are your three biggest achievements to date? Well, um, I have, um, it, it depends on what we think that is achievements. Um, 
uh, one thing, as you said, and I am very, very uh, 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 honored to have these awards because this is a recognition that people appreciate, at least that you have done uh, regarding, in this case, uh, the pharmacy, no, with capital letters. Uh, but the, um, regarding achievements, the real, to me, the real achievement sometimes, uh, and thinking in my two, um, uh, two organizations that I served all my life because I, I started, as you said, I am community pharmacist, but I started with 27 uh, in the in Consejo uh, at political level, and I've been there for 20 more than 20 years, and at the same time in the last uh, 12 years, I I share this work uh, with FIP because I, I always understood that uh, uh, everything that uh, we have to plan regarding pharmacy inside uh, the health um, has to be at global level. And now I, I am thinking that I I was right that uh, I we have as WHO said uh, in the past uh, we have to think global and act local I, I is my my style of life at professional life but regarding my achievements in consejo in spain and also in fip at global level i have to tell you that um, maybe the most important things that i i i, I did uh, sometimes it's better that um, they are so so transcendent for us that it's better to be cautious and let me to keep them to myself, uh, even in benefit of the future of the pharmacy, because um, pharmacy is so big, is so relevant for the society and for the world, for the health of the world, that uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes the politicians and the governments uh, don't understand what really important is the role of the pharmacist inside the society, not only a health matter, a health level, also at social and even at economic level, because it's, very, it's a very, very efficient profession inside the health system. And the really, to me, important achievements that I, I, I achieved to this or I did, they are so big, let me, I don't want to be pretentious, but uh, big regarding the importance for the profession that I have to protect themselves to future because sure that uh, they will, there will be repeat and we have to use the, uh, the things that we did and maybe uh, to use new tools to manage these situations. But uh, I have to tell you that uh, sometimes as the people say, uh, um, our value is more for the things that we don't say than for the things that we say. Wise, wise advice, Carmen. And also, the three biggest achievements today may be different tomorrow. Um, I will say one thing to you. Um, I think that your work in leading the women's roles in community and the responsible use of medicines is something that FIP will look back on in decades and think this is so important. If you think, Carmen, how much that work, when we published it last, last year, spoke about supporting women in communities globally to help families with vaccine hesitancy and with managing minor ailments, think about how important that is in COVID-19. So you are ahead of the curve on that. Now, Carmen, for me, you being the first female president was a complete signal for me personally to apply for the role as chief executive officer. And I always believe you need to see people in positions of authority and leadership to believe and understand that as a woman, you can aspire and attain those roles too. Who was a woman in leadership who inspired you? Uh, well, uh, as I told you at the, at the beginning of, of our conversation, my inspiration was and is my mother. Uh, uh, and for this reason, mm, the thing that you are saying that I, I, I thank you for, for your words, but it is a logical um, situation of, of a style of education that I received. And I, I put or I imprint uh, uh, this, uh, the, uh, this culture in everything that I, I have to work in, in, in it. For example, uh, regarding the FIP, uh, as you said, I was the first female in the presidency of the Spain 
eh, consejo eh, as, eh, that is the biggest association of pharmacists in, eh, in Spain, the first female in, in, in 100 years. Also, eh, the first female in FIP. Eh, even more, the first, not female, the first human being eh, eh, that arrived eh, to this position eh, speaking in Spanish, because eh, sometimes eh, it's the idea of the diversity, the idea of that we have to fight eh, for the right, the, the, the human rights in general of everybody, of course, of the half of the population that there are women, but also other, eh, um, other part of the, of the world of the human being that they are very important for, uh, for the full uh, humanity, but sometimes they don't have voice and they don't have a uh, vote uh, to, to change things to better. Uh, to me, it was very, very um, uh, gratifying for me uh, to, uh, in my presidency in FIP, that uh, I, at least, as you said, to open minds to young women in other parts of the world when they, they don't have so many um, uh, support uh, to, to develop um, at professional level, to develop at, um, uh, in the industry, in, in, other, in other positions, in other professions, and at least to open minds to this kind of young people, women, that they can say, okay, if this lady, if this woman can achieve, I can. I can do it. And with this, and I think that uh, it's work because it, it, it was for me, uh, to me, uh, mm, the example of my mother and other great women that I, I met in my, in my life, um, showed me that if I wanted to do something, I, I have to work for that because it's possible to achieve it. And this, well, um, I don't want to, uh, to say something that maybe for every other person don't, don't, don't care, but for example, that you, Catherine Dugan, um, uh, so brilliant pharmacist that she was a very high position inside the Royal Pharmaceutical Society, wanted to, to be with FIP, to serve, to work with us, to help us um, as the first uh, CEO female uh, in FIP after 100 years, to me, with this, this is my treasure. This is my, my part of my legacy because is that a brilliant woman, women can achieve where they want to be. Because not, not only because they want, it's because uh, they are necessary for these positions to support and to help other things. I'm sorry, but let me say that I am very proud of your work in, uh, during these uh, years that I, half and one year that you are working in FIP as CEO, but in this pandemic with the president Dominique Jordan, you are doing an amazing work supporting the rest of the pharmacies of the world uh, and giving visibility to the work of and, and the role of the pharmacist. Thank you, Catherine. It's not, I, I have to, to use this moment to say because uh, uh, it's very important that FIP with the president and the current CEO are doing uh, for the rest of pharmacists of the world. And I, I want to say you that, thank you very much. Carmen, I'm, I'm really touched by that. And you're quite right. You and I would normally have chance to see each other and to hold each other by the hands and say, I support you and we are missing this. So um, thank you. I take your, your comments in, in my heart. I really do. Um, what I hear from you, Carmen, all the time, um, we'll come on to the things you're most proud of now, but I hear the, um, the drive that you have, and you described yourself as restless at the start. You were a restless young girl. Um, I see that you don't just want to get to a position of power or authority, but you want to allow people, uh, women or other people from across the world, to get to those positions themselves. And that leads me to the question, what are the three things you are most proud of? I can tell you how I can see three things that you are most proud of, but I wanted to hear it from you. Maybe it's to, to, to say in a, in a sentence that there is at least, at least uh, um, that I think that uh, um, to, have, to have led uh, the organizations, Consejo and FIP that I served in, in, in them, uh, to, to leave them a bit better than 
how I found it. It's, at least it's very extremely simple, but it, is, um, uh, it has a lot of, uh, a, a lot of um, uh, uh, deep matters inside this idea. It's, it is to serve to, to, leave, to leave things better than uh, when uh, you, may, you enter in this organization. This is my, I think that the, my, my is more virtual proud that I have is to leave this organization better, better than how I found it. Maybe it sounds not very, a bit pretentious, but it is, um, is to explain that the, the only that people ask you, pharmacists, people up, uh, in the streets, uh, um, et cetera, is that uh, you can build a better world, uh, a better, only uh, with small steps, but a better world that uh, uh, regarding that you received. And is the, it was my, my objective. And I think that uh, at least in this, in my two great organizations I served, uh, I can do it. I can do it. This is. I think this really feeds onto your comment earlier on, Carmen, about think global, act local. So in the organizations you are leading, you need to hold them tight and bring them to a better place. It's a very good legacy and something I think I'm going to um, put in my notebook myself. Leave the place you are in a bit better than when you found it. It's a very good legacy for everything we do in our lives, Carmen, everything. You know, sustainability, the environment, um, being a woman in leadership, being a woman who speaks Spanish, because all of the world who speaks Spanish finds people like me very difficult to understand. So, you know, we all put ourselves in the other pe person's foot and shoe. Thank you. Now, Carmen, right at the beginning of the interviews, we mentioned how important it is to reflect for the next generation so that they don't necessarily make the same mistakes that we've made or take as long as we take to get success. Um, from the very start of this interview, you've been talking about the generation before you and the inspiration your mother has been. What would be your three top tips to the next generation? If you had young pharmacists and young pharmaceutical scientists in front of you, what the three things you would tell them? Yes, thinking in three things, I think that the first of all, to advance professional development at individual and at collective level as pharmacies or as health professionals, to advance, to advance professional development, Second, maybe to strengthen alliance between the different areas of pharmacy. Again, pharmacy in capital letters. Uh, I speak about science, research, university, industry, hospital, clinical biology, distribution, community pharmacy, etc. Is to strengthen alliance between us because it's not easy uh, to show uh, um, our power at professional and scientific level if we, we are not we don't have a unit, a strength, a strong unit at internal level as pharmacists in, in, all the, in all the areas of our work. And maybe the third one is a bit external, that is to, to fight in the, way, in the good way, to fight uh, for the leadership of pharmacy and pharmacists in health policies and in health legislations in everywhere in the world. We have to be more present as pharmacists in all the tables of power regarding the health of the citizens. Yes, you're so right. COVID-19 has really showed us, um, Carmen, or show, shown the world what we already know, the value of having pharmacy in all communities, um, the value of having access to medicines through pharmacies in all communities and having the pharmacist in those pharmacies uh, it could not be a better advocacy. We knew this already, but the COVID-19 has really exemplified this hugely. Yes, Carmen, I, I promise my commitment to you is that for our younger pharmacists and scientists, we will advance and strengthen alliances and fight the good fight, I promise you. So Carmen, we move to end our interview and I'm going to now ask you, what are the three essentials in your working life, especially during this COVID-19? For me, it 
coffee has developed a new importance <laughs> during COVID-19, but I just wondered what were your three essentials in your working life makes life easier? For well, as you said, the pandemic and you have been and you are already working very hard uh, to, to fight against the pandemic, not only finding or supporting people uh, uh, looking for vaccines and antivirals, also preparing our profession to do be the best, uh, the best health professionals uh, is, is our vision, no? Uh, to, to, I think that to hit the, the pandemic, uh, uh, the pandemic uh, has brought us a lot of pain, we know, uncertainty that we continue with this um, uncertainty, but has also taught us what is truly important in life. And when we revise, uh, it's a, a period of our time, even the, the lockdown, the, the, um, the isolation, gave us the opportunity to rethink everything in our life and to, to restructure our priorities at human beings, at global level. I, I am speaking at individual, but also at a, a, as collective. Well, um, regarding, let me say that regarding the half of the population uh, that are women, the COVID-19 has evidence three things, three issues that we have to solve. We knew, but uh, uh, the COVID highlight them more even that in the past. First, that mainly women assume all family and social functions related the care. And in these days of COVID-19, uh, the care at home, uh, the, the life at home uh, was more important. The second is women and, and, and their children sadly have suffered an increase in domestic violence during this health crisis. This is horrible, but it's, uh, the, the figures are there. And third, that women are the majority group of health professionals, including pharmacists, fighting against the COVID. Besides pharmacists, we, as health professionals, we are in the front line of risk. And we have been, and will continue being, an essential service since our rule, and once again, and we have been to work, like always, for, and with the patient and the society. This is our strength. This is our flag. The flag of pharmacists, our flag is the flag of the patients and the flag of the society who needs who need mm, us more than the past, even because the pandemic showed this. For this reason, we have to think uh, in all, in all, in men and women, children, in all, but we have to reinforce um, a society, uh, reinforce uh, the need to, to, not to protect, it's only to, uh, uh, to give um, all, the, uh, uh, all the power to women of the world to cut with this, um, this, uh, this function that is to be uh, sometimes, sometimes and a lot of maybe in, in uh, too much, uh, 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 in part of the world uh, that they are or we are uh, very alone regarding uh, the human rights. For the reason, uh, my, uh, my idea is that uh, all, uh, we have to work together. Uh, uh, pharmacists, women and men, we have to be very close uh, to the patients like always, but please uh, put a bit more um, interest in the work at global level in different parts of the world of these women that they are suffering because they are caring of the families, they are caring of the children, they are not well treated uh, inside their homes. And of course, they are health professionals. Mm, they are pharmacists, physicians, uh, nurses, and they are working in front line of the risk, helping the society and helping the patients. And we have to give more visibility to this role uh, uh, inside uh, uh, our politicians in the international organizations because they need to support more this, this role. Uh, Carmen, I think we're gonna have another series of um, webinars and online events to address this. Like you say, the COVID has been like a, a spotlight on 
um, or a magnifying glass on things that were happening already. Frontline workers, domestic violence, fighting, um, fighting the good fight at the front line, but also social care and home care. Women's roles in this are really, really huge. And we can't do it without the men that we work with and the men that uh, we live with. Um, so I think we should do a series on this, Carmen. I will, I will take this offline with you, but I think this would be a great one. The role of women and professionals in society would be a very good series. And we, FIP needs to shine a light on this. And given that we're both women in leadership positions, you as the first president and me as the first CEO, I think it's down to us to do this, Carmen. It also gives me a good opportunity to speak with you again, more regularly and more frequently. So I will be in touch. Thank you so much, Carmen. It has been such a pleasure and an honour to spend time with you today. And I look forward to the new series that you and I can develop offline. Thank you, Carmen. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, please. Thank you. Thank you.